Honors pre-calc peeps, it is I, your favorite math teacher, Mr. O'Rourke, and uh, I know it's been a while, but I'm finally here with our first distance learning math video, because what else would you rather be doing now sitting at home with nothing to do than some pre-calculus? So here I am to quench that mathematical thirst. Uh, so let's chat for a little bit before we get into these notes here. So a few things. Um, in a few days, I'm going to be reaching out with kind of an all-student, all-class email outlining how distance learning is going to go. But I'll give you just a brief outline here before we get started. So basically, we have nine weeks of distance learning, but we're only going to meet once a week for 45 minutes. So to maximize our time and to make it go as smoothly as possible, um, what I'm going to have you guys do is... Well, we're going to essentially flip the classroom. So I'm going to have you guys watch an instructional video at home by yourself on your own time. You'll have probably like a week to do this. And then when we meet together for our, you know, government mandated 45 minute class session, you know, we can all be prepared ahead of time. So that that way we can work on, you know, problems together when we're all together during that time. So this is going to be the first of those videos. So there's not going to be a test on this. There might be a little bit of a quiz, um, but we'll get into the, the weeds on grading in a little bit. I'm sure you've heard a lot about it, but we won't talk about that too much in this video. But this was going to this was supposed to be something we were going to do before uh, spring break and before all this craziness. Now, we didn't finish talking about, I don't know if you remember this, but section 1.7, which was inverse functions, and that's okay. We're just going to forget about that. We were only like halfway through it. Just toss that to the side. However, this is something for all you taking BC Calculus next year. Um, this is something that you are going to need to know. And it's also kind of fun. Dare I say fun. Um, so um, let's let's chat real quick about what we're going to be doing here. So this is kind of a random section here. It's from section 6.4 in the textbook. It's, it's called partial fractions. Um, and it's kind of a fun technique, and like I said, it's going to be something exclusive to um, to BC Calculus next year. Um, now, obviously, I prefer doing this in person with you because it is, you know, a little bit challenging, but not too bad. Um, but this is the next best thing. So hopefully, you and en you enjoy this. Um, now, anyway, so when we have our first meeting on, um, it won't be April fourteenth for us since we're even. It will be Thursday, April sixteenth. The expectation is that you guys have already watched this video and I only have to spend a couple minutes going over the material and then we'll try some problems out together and we can answer questions and, and things like that. Um, but anyway, this is called partial fraction decomposition. So I'll, I'll draw your brains back to something that we've done before um, in Algebra 2. So here's kind of an example of something you've already done. Um, let's say we had something like 1 over x plus 3. Um, plus, I don't know, uh, x over x minus 2 is equal to 3, something like that. Mm, not even equal to 3. Let's just say we had that expression right there. In Algebra 2, you guys did problems where the instructions were, okay, now combine those two fractions into one rational function. And you did that by finding what's called the LCD, right? The least common denominator or the lowest common denominator. And so in this case, the lowest common denominator, right? If you're adding fractions like, you know, one third plus a half, your LCD is three times two, which is six, right? So the lowest common denominator here is six. So you'd multiply the top and bottom of each of those fractions by what it didn't have in that LCD, right? So you get two sixths plus three sixths, and that gets you five sixths, right? So that's something we've done. This is the same idea. So the LCD here is x plus 3 times x minus 2, right? And so essentially you're going to multiply the top and bottom of either, each of those fractions by what it doesn't have, right? If you were asked to simplify this into one thing. So you'd end up with, let's see, x minus 2 over x minus 2, x plus 3. And then plus, let's see, you'd multiply the top and bottom of that one, the second fraction, by x plus 3. So we'd have x squared plus 3x all over the same denominator, right? x minus 2 times x plus 
3. And then you could add these together and you have one rational function, right? So we have x squared, it's going to be 3x plus x, so 4x, and then minus 2, all over x minus 2, x plus 3. Right, and you could even, if you wanted to, right, you could even multiply that out, you could FOIL that, right, and then you have a rational function, which we spent a lot of time on this year. Um, partial fraction decomposition is the process we just did, but completely in reverse. So you're going to be given something like that, and we need to go backwards and essentially decompose that rational function into the sum or difference of several what we call partial fractions, right? Which is we're decomposing it back into those original fractions. And it's kind of a tricky process. It's not as straightforward as what we just did. But, you know, once you get a hold of the algebra, it's actually not too, too bad. So ideally, uh, these blank notes are posted on Blackboard for your convenience. So you can download them, uh, print them off if you want to, follow along. Uh, I'm currently using a a Microsoft Surface tablet with a pen so I can edit the PDF just like we'd be doing kind of in class with the smart board notes. So if you'd like to do the same, you could do that. Um, probably since you guys are, you know, pretty good students and you like to organize yourself, maybe you'll want to print these out and annotate them. Or maybe you have your own notebook open and you're just writing your own notes like we're in class with the added benefit of, you know, you can stop this video whenever you want to. And you can also use it as ASMR to fall asleep if you really want. The options are endless. Just make sure you smash that like button and subscribe. Okay, cool. Anyway, so 6.4 partial fractions. Um, we'll probably do an optional quiz or some sort of assessment on this um, a little bit after we do it. Nothing in the fourth quarter actually counts as a grade. You guys are going to receive a no grade for fourth quarter, but anything you do complete and do well on, we're supposed to take into account to potentially raise your overall final grade for the year. Okay, so it's in your best interest to still follow along with what we're doing, still try out whatever homework assignments we give you, and then try to do your best on the assessments um, at home. Okay, so partial fraction decomposition of something of the form f of x over g of x. So that's right there. That's the form of a rational function, right, provided g of x is not zero. So First, first things first here, if f of x over g of x is not a proper fraction, you have to long divide f of x by g of x. Now, we've done that before already this year. I'll refresh your brain how to do it once we get a little bit further into this. But if it's not proper, you have to long divide f of x by g of x. So what does it mean to be proper? Proper fractions, the degree of the numerator, let's just write this out, to be a proper fraction the degree of the numerator has to be less, strictly less, than degree of the denominator. Okay, that's what it means to be proper. So before you can even do the process I'm about to get into, you have to make sure that your rational function is proper. If the degree of the numerator and denominator are the same, or the numerator is greater than the denominator, then you have to long divide them first, and we'll get into that a little bit later, okay? So first, check if it's a proper fraction. Next, so that'd be step one. Step two, completely factor g of x, which is your denominator, into linear factors or quadratic factors, and the key here is you want them to be irreducible, right? So say, for example, you had something like x squared minus four, in your denominator. That's not irreducible, right? That, in other words, can be reduced. You could factor that into x plus 2 times x minus 2. And those are both irreducible linear factors. Sometimes you'll get a quadratic factor that's irreducible. Like, for example, x squared plus 1 is irreducible. In that case, you'd just leave it as x squared plus 1. But like I said, more on that as we get into this. Okay. So first, we're totally factoring our denominator, and then we're kind of breaking this up and setting up the problem. For each linear factor that we have, our decomposition has to include a term that looks like this. A is just a number, okay? And the denominator is ax plus b. That's 
your factor from your denominator. So for each linear factor, you have to write a term out like this. So kind of the general rule of thumb, if your denominator is linear, your numerator has to be a constant. And the same thing holds through for quadratic. If your denominator is quadratic, then your numerator ends up being linear, and we'll see that in just a moment. Okay. So showing you all this up front is going to seem confusing, but once we get into it, you'll, you'll see how this works. It actually won't be too bad. So for each repeated linear factor, that means like, you know, something like x plus 1 quantity squared, right? That's a repeated factor of x plus 1 twice. Uh, for each of the repeated linear factors, the decomposition must include terms for all the possibilities. So if we take a look at this generalization right here, if we have the term x plus 1 quantity squared, we're going to need to include two terms for that. We have to include x plus 1 and another factor or fraction for x plus 1 quantity squared. You include a fraction for each iteration of the power of the factor, you know, kind of for each integer up to the max power. So you start at 1, then 2, then 3. You know, you really won't see anything above 2 or 3, but you'd have to include one for each, and we'll get into that a little bit later also. For each distinct quadratic factor, this is what I was talking about before, your decomposition has to include a term that looks like this. So your, your irreducible quadratic factor goes in the denominator and then your your numerator is going to be one degree less so this ends up being linear okay so there's a little bit of a pattern there and then you also could have repeated quadratics we really won't see that but it works the exact same way you just include one for each power of the repeated factor up to the max power itself and then we're going to use some algebraic techniques to solve this so for the most part you can just kind of do some really simple linear algebra to solve these things. Sometimes you might have to solve by using a system, um, and other times you can use what's called equating coefficients, but for the most part it's not too bad. So if you need to pause this and, and review what we just talked about for a second, that's cool. But let's move on to an example here. So this example I've kind of already done the workout, and we'll just talk through it. So here is the starting function. Now we want to decompose this, right? So we have 2x to the fourth minus 8x squared plus 5x minus 2 all over x cubed minus 4x. So if you go back up to the steps that I laid out, before we can even do this, we have to check to see if this is proper. And it's not, right? The degree of the top is x to the fourth, the degree of the bottom is x to the third. So we have to start with some long division. So let's go ahead and do that. Okay, so x cubed minus 4x on the outside, 2x to the fourth minus 8x squared plus 5x minus 2 on the inside. So um, let's see, we need to multiply x cubed by something so that it cancels with 2x to the fourth. That's just going to be 2x. All right, so minus sign on the outside, 2x times x cubed gets us 2x to the fourth, and then 2x times negative 4x is minus 8x squared. Okay, so it looks like we're going to get the two for one special here. So the 2x to the fourths cancel. Negative 8x squared plus 8x squared, those also go to zero. And we're left with 5x, bring that down, and then the minus two. Okay, so we know we're done when the degree of our remainder is less than our divisor, right? So our divisor has a degree of x cubed. Our remainder right now has a max degree of x to the first, right? So we're done. So plus, and then we take our remainder, 5x minus 2, and that goes over our original divisor, which was x cubed minus 4x. And that gets us to step two down here. Okay, so we long divided and now we're here. So the 2x is part of our answer but it doesn't have to be included in our reduction. Our decomposition, we're going to decompose that. Okay, and that is proper. Hooray! So we can go ahead and, and go to the next step here. So the next step is to totally factor 
the denominator. So it's pretty easy to factor this. We can pull out an x, and we're left with x squared minus 4, and that factors into x minus 2 times x plus 2. So it factors into those factors right there. So we have three distinct linear factors. Okay, so now comes our decomposition, our setup, if you will. So for each of those distinct linear factors, we have to write it as its own fraction. We have to assume that at the very beginning, we had at most three fractions. Now, sometimes one of these ends up being zero and it goes away. And if that's the case, that's fine. But we have to figure that out through algebra. So 5x minus 2 over x cubed minus 4x. That's going to decompose into something of the form a over x plus b over x minus 2 plus c over x plus 2. Okay, so for each of these linear factors right here, we wrote a fraction for it over on the right hand side. Okay, so now our goal is to just do some basic algebra to solve for a, b, and c. Okay, so um, step four, to actually solve for a, b, and c, we're going to multiply through by the LCD. Now the LCD is just whatever you factored your denominator into. That's your least common denominator. So your LCD is just that right there. So we're going to multiply this entire equation through by the LCD. And when that happens, on the left-hand side, everything cancels except for the numerator. Okay. And on the right-hand side, okay, well, a over x times x times x minus 2 times x plus 2, the x's would cancel, and we're left with a times x minus 2 times x plus 2. Then we're going to multiply the b over x minus 2. The x minus 2 cancels there, and we have plus b times x times x plus 2, and then plus c times x times x minus 2. Okay, So that's this step right here. Now at this point, what we're going to do is just carefully choose values of x to plug in so that we can cancel out um, you know, two of the unknowns so we can solve for one of them. And if you choose x carefully, you should be able to do that fairly easily. So for example, let's say we wanted to start by solving for a. The first thing I would notice is I would look through and I would say, well, b and c are both being multiplied by x, but a is not. So if I choose x equal to 0, the b and c would cancel out and go to 0, allowing us to solve for a. So if I go ahead and plug in 0 into this entire equation, I get 5 times 0 minus 2, which is negative 2. The b term cancels, the c term cancels. And I'm left with a times negative 2 times 2, so negative 4a. And then you can divide by negative 4, and you get a is equal to a half. Right? So now back in that initial setup, all the way at the top right here, a we now know is 1 half. And we continue in this way until we find all the unknowns. Right? So let's say, just going left to right, let's say we wanted to solve for b next. Well, I notice that a and c are being multiplied by x minus 2, but b is not. So if we choose x equals 2, that's going to make a go to 0, and that's going to make c go to 0, allowing us to solve for b. So if we plug in 2, we get 5 times 2 minus 2, which is 8. On the right-hand side, a goes to 0, and c goes to 0, and b is going to be 2 times 4, which is 8b. So b comes out to 1. Finally, we can solve for c by plugging in x equals negative 2, and that makes a and b go to 0, and we can solve for c. And if we do that, we get c is negative 3 halves. Now something to point out, as you solve for a, b, c, etc., right, sometimes it goes up to d and e, you can plug in those values and use them if you're confident they're right. So this is important kind of later on, um, and, and we'll see that. Okay, so now the last thing to do is just to wrap this all up. Remember that 2x from the very beginning? We have to bring this guy back in. And then we have our decomposition for 5x minus 2 over x cubed minus 4x. So um, we're going to plug in 1 half for a. We're going to plug in 1 for b and negative 3 halves for c. Remembering that 2x from the very beginning. 
and we find that our example from the very start decomposes to 2x plus 1 over 2x plus 1 over x minus 2 plus negative 3 over 2x plus 4. Now kind of the step before that, which is also acceptable, 2x plus, you can just keep your 1 half unsatisfyingly in the numerator there if you really want to, plus 1 over x minus 2 plus negative 3 halves over x plus 2. Okay, now that's also fine if you put your answer like that. Okay, so it's not exactly a hard process. It, it's definitely a time-consuming process. Okay, but again, our, our goal is to decompose our original rational function into partial fractions, and that's exactly what we have here. These are called partial fractions. Now, believe me when I say, when you get to the point where you need these in BC Calc, this is incredibly important and incredibly useful and makes problems that are impossible quite doable. All right. So that's the importance behind this. Let's go ahead and try out an example. Now, if you'd like to try this on your own, feel free to pause this video here and you can give it a shot. Um, otherwise, I'm just going to move forward with this. So let's try a repeated factor example together. So this is already proper, and it's already factored for us, which is great. So we can go ahead right with the setup here. So remember what I said before, right? So if I have a repeated linear factor, I have to make a fraction for each iteration of the power of that factor, starting with just to the first all the way up to the max power, counting by 1. So we're going to set this up as a over x minus 1. That's to the first, right? plus b over x minus 1 squared plus c over x minus 1 cubed. Okay, so notice I have one fraction for each iteration of the power of that repeated factor, fraction. Okay, factor, excuse me. Now, some of these might end up going to zero, like I said before, um, or we might have all three um, fractions, but we have to make sure, right? So think about this. If I'm looking for the LCD combining these things, it's going to be x minus 1 cubed. Now that might mean that there is no x minus 1 squared. It might mean that there's no x minus 1, but we have to be absolutely sure. So the next step is just to multiply through by x minus 1 cubed. So the LCD again is x minus 1 cubed. Okay, so if we do that, it cancels, and it should do this every time, on the left side, totally cancels, we're left with 2x. Let's see, one of the x minus 1s will cancel here, and we have a times x minus 1 squared. Two of them will cancel on the next one, so plus b times x minus 1, and then just plus c. Okay, um, so at this point, let's see if we can work our way through this algebraically. Now, you're probably noticing right off the bat that this one's not going to be as easy to solve algebraically as the previous example, right? The one that we just did together, it was very clear what to plug in for x to get the other two quantities to cancel and go to zero, allowing us to isolate one and solve. Here, not so much, right? a and b are both being multiplied by x minus 1, C, however, is not being multiplied by anything. So if we start this off by using x equal to 1, we can actually solve for C. So for all you OCD people out there, right, who want to solve for A first and go left to right alphabetically, we actually can't do that here. Don't worry, it's bothering me too. So plugging in 1, we get 2 is equal to 0 plus 0 plus C. So C is equal to 2. Okay. So you'll notice at this point that it's not obvious what to plug in. In fact, you can't just plug in an x value to get b and c to cancel, allowing you to solve for a or vice versa to solve for b. So at this point, we're going to proceed by using a system of equations. Now, we can actually plug in 2 for c at this point. Um, okay, so bear with me. Let's start by plugging in x is equal to 0. Okay, if I plug in 0 we get 0 on the left, and then we get negative 1 squared, so we get a, and then we get minus b, and that's going to be plus 2, right? We got the 2 is equal to c from before. 
Now, I want to, if you guys remember system of equations from Algebra 1 and Algebra 2, one of the ways you can solve them is by adding the two equations together. And that's what we're trying to do here. So I now want to pick an x value that either gets me negative a, which is not possible, right, because we're squaring that quantity, so that's never going to be negative, or gets me negative b. Sorry, or positive b. So we can cancel with the negative b we already have. If we pick x is equal to 2, we're going to get that, right? So if I plug in 2, I get 4 on the left, and I'm going to get 2 minus 1, which is 1 squared, so we just get a again. When I plug 2 into b times x minus 1, I get plus b and then plus 2, right? That's our c value. So now, like I said, we're going to solve this by solve system by elimination. This is where these questions get a little bit wonky, but it's not that bad, right? So now we're just going to literally add these two equations together. So we get 4 is equal to 2a, the b's are going to cancel, plus 4, okay? And so we end up with just a equal to 0. So the x to the first term actually isn't even going to be there, which is kind of cool, right? So now what we can do is we can take that a is equal to 0, plug it back in anywhere over in any of these equations, and just solve for b. So at this point, we can go, OK. So if I choose x is equal to 0, um, I get 0 is equal to, now we know a is 0, minus b plus 2. So b is equal to 2 as well. OK? So now we can plug them in, and we're done. So our final answer here, I kind of ran out of space, but I guess I'll go here. Okay, so our answer is going to be, we have zero for A, so that term won't even be there. We have two over X minus one squared plus two over X minus one cubed. And that's our answer. Not bad. Now there's a way you can get around this solving the system by elimination. We could use a method called equating coefficients, which I'll outline here right below. So equating coefficients is a really, really interesting algebraic technique. It's also super useful, um, especially for examples like this where the algebra gets a little bit dicey. Okay. So equating coefficients, here's how this works. The, the, the place where this deviates happens I'll choose another color here, happens in this step, okay? So for equating coefficients, instead of, at this point, plugging in different x values to solve, what we instead do is we multiply everything out. Multiply everything out, okay? So... What that means is, right, you would FOIL out x minus 1 squared, distribute the a through, um, distribute the b to the x minus 1, and then combine like terms afterwards, right? But this is the multiplication step. So we have 2x is equal to ax squared minus 2ax plus a plus bx minus b plus c. Okay? Remember, a, b, and c are just numbers. All right? So at this point, we're going to combine like terms. Well, the only x squared term I have is ax squared. So this is going to be x squared. The coefficient is a on that, OK? Now we have negative 2ax plus bx. So if I was combining like terms here, right? If I had 2x plus 3x, I would add the 2 and the 3 and get 5. In this case, my two coefficients are negative 2a and b. So our coefficient for x is negative 2a plus b. And then we have three constants, a minus b plus c. So we're combining all of those together. So now what we're going to do is literally equate them to what we have on the left-hand side. There is no x squared term on the left-hand side, right? So that's 0x squared. Our linear term is 2x, and then there's no constant term, so plus 0. So now we're literally going to equate these things, right? This is what an equal sign literally means. On the left-hand side, the coefficient of the x squared term is 0. On the right-hand side, it's a. 
So we set those two things equal and we get a is equal to zero. Then we take our linear term, negative 2a plus b, and set that equal to the linear term on the left, which is 2. Now since a is 0, we just get b is equal to 2. And then we take our constant term on the right and set it equal to the constant term on the left. So we get a minus b plus c is equal to 0. So a is 0, b is 2, so we get negative 2 plus c is equal to 0, so c is equal to 2. And man, is that a heck of a lot easier than solving this system by elimination. Really, really useful. So sometimes you can use a combination. You can start out by finding C at the very beginning of a plugging in one and then, you know, switching gears and going to equating coefficients. Really useful technique. OK, so let's try some more examples out here. Again, feel free to pause the video if you need to. Anyway, this one is already proper. OK, and it's already been factored for us. So let's go ahead and set this up. We're going to have a over x plus 3 plus b over 2x minus 1. Okay, so now we're going to multiply through by our LCD. The LCD here is x plus 3 times 2x minus 1. Okay, so we're going to multiply through by this. Now, you might have put the b over over x plus 3 and the a over 2x minus 1, that's okay. Your answer is still going to be the same in the end. Your a and b's might be different than mine, but your answer is going to be the same. Okay, so if we multiply through, we have 4x plus 3 on the left. We have a times 2x minus 1 plus b times x plus 3. Now, this one's going to be pretty straightforward. We can just pick uh, certain values for x, and we can isolate a and b. So if, let's say we want to solve for a first, right? So to get b to go to 0, we would plug in negative 3 for x. OK, so 4 times negative 3 is negative 12, plus 3 is negative 9, equals a times, OK, that's going to be negative 6 minus 1, so negative 7. So let's see, a is going to be 9 sevenths. OK, cool. Um, now let's solve for b. Let's pick x is equal to, okay, so if I want a to go to 0, then I want to plug in positive a half, and that'll be 1 minus 1, and that'll be 0. So let's plug in x is equal to a half. So 4 times a half is 2, plus 3 is 5. a goes to 0. Um, and then we have 1 half plus 3, so 3.5. Let's see, that's going to be... Why am I blanking on this? 7 point, uh, God, 7, jeez. 3.5, that is 7 halves, my God. Quarantine is getting to me, peeps. Okay, cool, so B is going to be, if we solve for that, that was embarrassing, that's going to be 10 sevenths. Hopefully my parents aren't listening in the other room. They're like, ugh, man, this is the one thing our son is supposed to be good at, and he couldn't even turn 3.5 into a fraction in a decent amount of time. Anywho, let's go ahead and plug everything in. So we get, and now there's a couple ways you can write this. You can do 9 sevenths in the numerator over x plus 3, plus 10 sevenths in the numerator over 2x minus 1. That's a fine answer. Or you can bring those sevens down and multiply them through. So you could also do 9 over, let's see, that'd be 7x plus 21, plus 10 over, that's going to be 14x minus 7. That's also a fine answer. Most of you probably prefer that second one because it's a little bit uh, um, neater, so to speak. But uh, either one's fine. Okay, so there you go. Right, not much to it. Let's look at the next one. Sip of water. I'm losing all the moisture in my mouth. Okay, so this one is improper. To start. So we have to start with some long divige. <laughs> I was about to write something else. I won't say what. Long division. Okay, let's do it. So if the degree of the top and bottom are the same, it's still considered improper. So x squared minus 2x plus 1 on the outside. 8x squared 
plus 12x minus 1 on the inside. So let's go ahead and do this. I want to cancel out the 8x squared, so we're just going to multiply by 8. Negative sign. So 8x squared minus 16x plus 8. Okay, so those cancel there. Uh, let's see, we're going to have 12 plus 16, so that's going to be 28x. And then negative 1 minus 8, that's going to be minus 9. Okay, so the remainder at this point is 28x minus 9. So that degree is less than our original divisor of x squared minus 2x plus 1. So we're done long dividing. It was just one step, right? So now we can write our remainder. So we have 28x minus 9 over x squared minus 2x plus 1. Okay, uh, so if we come back over here, this is right what we have. So 8 plus 28x minus 9 over x squared minus 2x plus 1. Okay, so now we're going to go ahead and we're going to decompose this guy. The 8's going to stay there. We're going to need it at the very end, but we're just going to decompose this. All right, so let's go ahead and fully factor that denominator. So let's see, that's going to be 28x minus 9 over, okay, so let's see, two numbers that multiply to 1 and add to negative 2. That's negative 1, right? So this is going to be x minus 1 quantity squared, all right? Um, so let's see, that's going to get us x squared, right? Minus x minus x plus 1. So we have a repeated linear factor here, all right? So we're going to do a over x minus 1 plus b over x minus 1 quantity squared. And then we're going to multiply through by the LCD, and I'm quickly running out of space. That's okay. I can go on to the next page if I need to. Okay, so multiplying through by the LCD, we get 28x minus 9 is equal to... Okay, so one of the x minus 1s will cancel here. We have a times x minus 1, and then we just have plus b. So if I want to plug in x is equal to 1 here, the a will go to 0, and we can solve for b. So let's see, that's going to be 28 minus 9, which is 19. So b comes out to 19. And then, now that we know b is 19, we can plug in literally any number we want to besides 1 to solve for a. So 0 is probably a good choice, right? So when x is equal to 0, we have negative 9 on the left, and then we have negative a, and we have plus 19. So um, negative 9 minus 19 is negative 28. So negative 28 equals negative a. So a is equal to 28. All right. So our answer is going to be 28 over x minus 1 plus 19 over x minus 1 squared. And then we need that 8 from the very beginning, plus 8. Y'all thought I would forget it, but I didn't. I defied the odds. So there you go. There's your answer. Okay. Um, kind of cool. So a um, few more examples here. Um, I want to show you this quadratic, and then uh, there's some more below that we can continue to practice on. All right. So this one, we're going to have a quadratic um, factor, and we can see that already. So this is proper. Um, and it's also been factored for us. So let's go ahead and set this up. So we're going to have a over x plus 1 plus, okay, so if our, and this is irreducible, right? which means I can't factor that into anything else. Um, so it's a true quadratic factor. So our denominator is going to be quadratic. Now, if y'all remember from what I said before, the numerator is always one degree less than the denominator. So if our denominator is quadratic, our numerator has to be linear. And it's going to be of the form bx plus c. So we actually still have three quantities we have to solve for. Uh, so let's get into this and let's try this out. 
Uh, so the LCD is going to be x plus 1 times x squared plus 2. We're going to multiply through. So we end up with x squared plus 3x minus 1 is equal to, okay, so the x plus 1 is going to cancel. We have a times x squared plus 2. And then we have plus bx plus c. The x squared plus 2 cancels, and we have times x plus uno. Okay, so there's a couple ways we can go about doing this. Um, you have options. You could make the entire quantity bx plus c go to 0 by plugging in negative 1 for x, and then you can solve for a, and then you can plug in 0 for b, um, and you could solve for c, and then you can plug in something else, and you could solve for b. Um, but I think I want to try this by equating coefficients. So let's give it a shot. Um, let me write out what I'm doing here. So this is equating coefficients. All right, let's do this one entirely by equating coefficients. So the left side is x squared plus 3x minus 1 is equal to. So we have ax squared plus 2a. All right. And then we're going to have, we have to FOIL this out. So we have plus bx squared. And then plus bx plus cx plus c. Okay, so now we're going to combine some like terms. And we have x squared plus 3x minus 1. So um, we have an ax squared and a bx squared. So this is going to be a plus b as the coefficient of the x squared. And now we're looking at the linear terms. We have b plus c. So plus b plus cx. And then we have 2a plus c, and that's going to be our constant term. Okay. So um, now we're going to take each of the quantities on the right and make an equation out of the coefficient on the left. So the coefficient on the left of the x squared is 1, so we have a plus b is equal to 1. And then we also have b plus c is equal to 3, right? So here's our a plus b is equal to that 1 right there. Our b plus c is equal to that 3. And then our 2a plus c is going to be equal to the negative 1, right? So we have 2a plus c is equal to negative 1. So now we're left with a system of equations again. Um, so at this point, we want to kind of combine these so that something cancels. Um, or we can solve by substitution so that one equation is entirely in terms of um, a, b, or c. So um, let's get that middle one, or rather, eh, yeah, let's get this right one all in terms of b. So let's solve, um, let's solve this for a. So a is equal to negative b plus 1. And if we solve this, we get c is equal to negative b plus 3. So we can go ahead and plug both of those into here. So we have 2 times negative b plus 1. And then we have um, plus negative b plus 3 is equal to negative 1. So solving this, we have negative 2b plus 2 minus b plus 3 is equal to negative 1. So we have negative 3b plus 5 is equal to negative 1. So we have negative 3b is equal to negative 6. So b is equal to 2. Woohoo! Okay, so we already solved for a and b on the left-hand side. So all we have to do now is plug b into those, and we can solve for a and c. So a is going to be negative 2 plus 1. So a is equal to negative 1. And then c is equal to negative 2 plus 3. So c is equal to 1. All right, cool. So lots of work, but now we're going to write our final answer here. Um, take all of our pieces and plug them back into the original. So our original was negative 1 over x plus 1. And then we had plus. 2x plus 1, and that denominator was x squared plus 2. And there's our answer.
Hooray! So that's equating coefficients. Now, you could have made that a little bit easier by, you know, combining the two methods. You could have plugged in negative 1 at the very beginning and solved for A. And that would have made, you know, the equating coefficient step a little bit easier. But um, it's also nice to just kind of take a step back and admire your work a little bit. Um, really nice stuff there. Okay. So if you have questions, make sure you make a note of it. I can answer it when we meet virtually um, on the 16th. Anyway, here's some extra examples. Feel free to pause right now and try them on your own. But uh, one thing I do want to talk about here, and this video is getting a little bit long, so I'm, I think I'm just going to do the first one here. Eh, I'll do both. Um, this is uh, proper here. So we can go ahead and just kind of start the problem. And we'll start by factoring. So we have x squared plus 4 in the numerator. And the bottom is going to factor into x squared minus 1, x squared plus 1. Okay, so the x squared plus 1 is irreducible, but the x squared minus 1 still factors. So we have x squared plus 4 over, this is going to be x minus 1 times x plus 1 times x squared plus 1. Okay, so this one's going to be a little bit of a doozy. This one's going to have four um, values we need to solve for. We have a over x minus 1 plus b over x plus 1 plus, and then we have a quadratic, so plus cx plus d over x squared plus 1. Okay, so multiplying through by the LCD, we end up with x squared plus 4 is equal to, all right, so the x minus 1 cancels with the, the a over x minus 1 term, and we're left with a times x plus 1 times x squared plus 1, and then plus the x plus 1 is going to cancel here, so x minus 1 times x squared plus 1, and the x squared plus 1 term totally cancels, and we have plus cx plus d times x minus 1 times x plus 1. Okay, so um, ways that we can kind of figure this out. Try to plug in values of x from the very beginning that make certain things cancel and allow you to solve for others. If we choose x is equal to 1, the cx plus d term will go to 0, and the b will go to 0, and we can solve for a. So let's start with that. When x is equal to 1, we get 5 on the left, we're going to have a times 2 times 2 plus 0 plus 0. So we have 5 is equal to 4a. So a is equal to 5 fourths. Okay, so we have one of the values done. Um, I'm going to get rid of those plus zeros there. They're in the way. Okay, so we have a is equal to 5 fourths. Using the same process, we can also isolate b by multiplying um, or by plugging in, rather, x equals negative 1. And that's going to make the a and the cx plus d both go to 0. So, again, we're going to have 5 on the left. And then we're going to have b times negative 2 times 2. So, that's going to be 5 is equal to negative 4b. So, b is equal to negative 5 fourths. Okay, so we got two of them out of the way. Let's see, now that we know that a is 5 fourths and b is negative 5 fourths, we can actually still do this in this method. Um, we can make c go to 0 by plugging in 0 for x, allowing us to solve for d. Now this is going to get a little bit messy. So when x is equal to 0, we have 4 on the left. We have 5 fourths, right? So that's what a is times 1 times 1, so we have 5 fourths, and then we're going to have, let's see, then we're going to have negative 5 fourths for b times negative 1, and that's going to be plus another 5 fourths. Okay, so now the c times x is going to go to 0, right? So we have um, d for that one quantity times negative 1 times 1. So that comes out to 
minus d. Okay, so 5 fourths plus 5 fourths. So 4 is equal to 10 fourths minus d. So let's see. Um, that's going to be 16 fourths um, minus 10 fourths is equal to negative d. So that's going to be 6 fourths, which is 3 halves equals negative d. So d is negative 3 halves. Whew. Okay, now if you thought that was fun, now we get to just plug in some random value for x and we can solve for c. Um, so equating coefficients might have been a little bit easier. I'm going to go up to the top here now. So we already used uh, 1, we already used negative 1, and we already used 0. So we have to pick something besides that. Um, let's use 2. Okay, so if we pick x is equal to 2, we have 2 squared, which is 4. 4 plus 4 is 8. Okay, so then we're going to have 5 fourths times 3 times, let's see, that's going to be 5. Okay, and b is negative 5 fourths, so minus 5 fourths. Let's plug in 2, so 2 minus 1 is 1, and then 2 squared is 4, plus 1 is 5, okay? And then we're going to have plus, that's going to be 2c, d is minus 3 halves, and that's going to be times 1, times 3. And now we're just going to be uber careful. Okay, so I'm actually going to cheat and use a calculator. So 8 is equal to, so 5 fourths times 3 times 5 comes out to 75 fourths. Okay, and then we're going to have this one I can do. This is minus 25 fourths. All right, and then we're going to have, let's see, that's going to be 2c times 3, so plus 6c and then negative 3 halves times 3, so minus 9 halves. Okay, so 8 plus 9 halves gets us 25 halves on the left. Let's see, this is going to be 50 fourths plus 6c. Okay, so 25 halves minus 50 fourths comes out to, wouldn't you know it, that comes out to 0. So we get 0 equals 6c. So c after all that is just equal to 0. Totally cool. Now we'll come back and write our answer. And I have inevitably run out of space. So let's see if I can squeeze it. So here's our answer. Okay. A is 5 fourths. So we have 5 fourths over x minus 1. And then minus 5 fourths over x plus 1. Remember, c was 0. So now we just have minus 3 halves over x squared plus 1. And that's our answer. What a great problem. Okay. And now for the last one here. And then this video hopefully will be less than an hour long. But it is what it is. So this one is improper. So we have to start with, let's kind of break this up. We have to start this one with some long division. So let's go ahead and do that off to the side. So long division. x to the fourth plus x squared. On the inside, we're going to have 3x to the sixth plus 3x to the fourth plus 3x. OK, so uh, let's see. Let's multiply by 3x squared. That's a 2. So we have minus 3x to the sixth. That's going to be plus 3x to the fourth. Okay, so those cancel, those cancel, and we're left with a 3x here. So this one actually is not too bad. Now we have plus 3x over x to the fourth plus x squared. Okay, so let's write that over here. 3x squared plus 
3x over x to the fourth plus x squared. So now we're just going to decompose this guy right here. So let's go ahead and do that. Factoring the denominator, we can pull out an x squared. And if we do that, we're left with x squared plus 1. Okay, so the question here is, is x squared quadratic or is it a repeated linear? Well, this is actually reducible here, right? x squared is reducible into x times x. So this is actually a repeated linear. Super important to recognize that, okay? So this comes out to a over x plus b over x squared. It's a repeated linear plus cx plus d over x squared plus 1. Okay. All righty. So uh, let's go ahead and we'll multiply through by um, the LCD. So we get 3 is equal to, let's see, that's going to be a times x times x squared plus 1. That's going to be plus b times x squared plus 1. And that's going to be plus cx plus d times x squared. Okie dokes. So if I pick um, x is equal to 0, that's going to make um, everything go to 0. Oh, no, I can, solve for, I can solve for b that way. So if we pick x is equal to 0, I'm going to get 3 is equal to a goes to 0. I get b. And then the cx plus d also goes to 0. So b is equal to 3. Okay, and at this point, we have reached the limit of what we can do. Um, so we can proceed by equating coefficients. So we'll say 3 is equal to, and now we're just going to kind of multiply everything out. So we have ax cubed, okay, plus ax. We already know b is 3, so we have plus 3x squared plus 3, and then we go, then we have plus cx cubed plus dx squared. So now we're going to go ahead and equate all of our coefficients, um, but let's go ahead and combine some like terms first. So 3 is equal to, so we have two x cubed terms. We have a plus c x cubed, and then we have for the x squareds a 3 and a d. So we have plus 3 plus, whoops, 3 plus d, x squared, um, just ax, so plus ax, and we can put that in parentheses as well. And then let's see, the only constant term we have here is 3. Cool. Okay, so again, I have run out of space. I can't just extend the page um, like I did, like I could on Smartboard. Uh, let's see if I can fit this in. This might be a disaster, but um, we'll see what happens. Okay, so we have um, a plus c is equal to 0, right? On the left-hand side, the x cubed has a coefficient of 0. We have 3 plus d is equal to 0. The coefficient of x squared is 0. We have a is equal to 0, so we have that term now. And then we have 3 is equal to 3, which makes sense, right? Now, if we didn't actually plug that in from the beginning to solve for b, we could have done it really easily right here. Okay. So now we know a is 0, which means c is also 0. And if we solve for d, we get d is negative 3. So actually, a lot of the stuff ends up canceling here. And um, now we'll come back and uh, we'll write our answer. Okay, so let's see. Uh, let me squeeze it in here. Answer. First things first, the 3x from the very beginning. 3x squared, so 3x squared. Okay, so the a over x term is going to go to 0. And we have plus 3 for b over x squared. C is also 0, so we have just minus 3 over x squared plus 1. And that is our answer. 
That's the end of our notes. That's a John O'Rourke Ridge. Let me go ahead and sign those bad boys. Woohoo. Okay, cool. So, hour long video, kind of a long video, but um, you guys can break it up as you need to. You can start and stop um, as long as you have watched it by the time we meet on Thursday, April 14th, or April 13th, rather. Then we can discuss these things together and go over some stuff and maybe even try a few problems together. All right. So hope you enjoyed the video. Hope you guys are staying safe. Hope you guys are keeping busy. Um, yeah, that's all I got for you. Peace till next time.